Let's talk about translation units. C++, I believe, is the only language with this concept, though I could be wrong. In Java or C Sharp, when you feed the compiler several files and you reference classes from one file to another, uh, the compiler can see all those files together. In C++, however, even though we tell the compiler, here's a bunch of code files, compile them, the compiler evaluates only one file at a time, not all of them as a batch. So if I reference code, like a function or a class in one file that's declared in another file, I have to do some tricks to make sure the compiler um, knows it's there. But other than that, the, the compiler sees nothing across two different files. So notice here I, I have the command prompt here and I brought this up so I can do my compilation on the command line just to demystify a lot of the magic that Visual Studio is doing for you. Uh, magic is good, if, except when you don't understand it. So let's move beyond uh, being ignorant and enlighten ourselves. I have two code files, cpp scratchpad.cpp and another cpp file.cpp. Um, here I have my main, it's empty, it's boring. Here in this file is nothing. Uh, and if I list the contents of my code files directory here, you'll see that uh, th basically, well, let me, sorry. Basically, uh, there's the two files here. That's it. That's all that's in my directory. So let, let's have some fun here. I'm going to make a foo method, void. Well, actually, even before that, let's let's just try calling foo. Now, the compiler will complain and say, I do not know what foo is. And if I go back over to the command prompt here, let me um, clear the screen. To invoke the Microsoft C++ compiler on the command line, you just say cl. And let's feed it cpp scratchpad not cpp. So cpp scratchpad. I hit tab to do the auto completion thing. Hit enter. Uh, get a lot of output, and um, you'll see that it compiled fine. And the reason it compiled fine is I forgot to save this file. So let's save this file and try that exercise again. Oh, now we have an error. The compiler complained, and it says, "Hey, you called foo. I don't know what foo is. You're calling foo, but uh, do you?" I'd be about you. I don't know what foo is. Okay, so that's the compiler complaining. Remember, remember the three stages of the whole compilation process is the linker, the comp or not the linker, the preprocessor first, the compiler second, and the linker third. All right, this is the compiler. It's saying you called foo. Foo does not exist. So now I can come down here and say, okay, well, let's define foo. I'll tell you what foo is. It's this thing that returns void, takes zero arguments, and does nothing. So now when I tell the compiler to compile this file, it will take foo and generate machine code out of it. It's going to be very boring, but it will. And then when it sees foo down here, it says, oh, I know what that foo is. It's, it's these instructions I put over here. So then the compiler will jump over and make a call to foo. So let's, let's try that again. And uh, let me just clear the screen and make that easier. So we see, oh, that worked. That was great. No errors. It generated a CPP scratchpad.exe file, which I can execute, and there's no output, obviously. So let's list the contents of the directory now. Notice we have two new files. We have the obj file, and we have a .exe file. Key term, the compiler generates, or key concept, the, the compiler generates the obj file, the linker generates the .exe file. The compiler generates the OBJ file, the link from the CPP file. The linker takes the OBJ file as the input and generates EXE. Well, with one file, this is boring. The, the linker's job is pretty much useless. So let's make the linker's job a little more interesting. I'm going to take this foo function here. I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to paste it over here, and I'm going to save both files. The only thing I did is move foo. Okay, and then back over here, I want to start out clean. You'll hear the concept of cleaning your project, cleaning uh, Visual Studio if you tell it to clean. This is exactly what it does. I want to start clean, meaning I only want my CPP files. So let's uh, delete star.exe and star.obj. So now, if I do a dir, uh, we see we only have our CPP files back. So now, let's uh, let's 
uh, arrow up to the command where we compile and we say cl cpp scratchpad.cpp. Well, if I only feed it the cpp one file, you'll see that it'll only see what I've highlighted here. Which makes sense. It would it would it will cry on foo. It says I, I I don't see a foo anywhere in here. And you would think if you know I I add another cpp file that cpp here if I give it both files. Intuition from other languages would say oh well now it can see both files so so it can see the foo. But that's not how C++ works. C++ only looks at one file at a time. So it will first compile cpp scratchpad.cpp notice there's no foo in here and then it will move over to another cpp file that cpp and compile this one so it can either see all of this or it can only see all of this but it can't see both together key concept of the c++ compiler so let's let's just prove the point here it makes sure both files are saved hit enter notice the output it said, hey, I'm, I'm going to try compiling cpp scratchpad.cpp. And when it did, it got an error. It said, foo, I don't know what foo is. I, I, I can't see a foo anywhere in here. But then it moved on and it said, okay, well, let's, let's compile another cpp file, or, yeah, another cpp file.cpp. And notice there was no error with that. If you look at this file all by itself, it just declares a foo function. It's empty. And, but all this code that I've highlighted in this translation unit is legit. There's there's nothing wrong with it. So let's let's uh, let's look at the end result of all the files. We see that another cpp file.obj, the compiler created that because another cpp file by itself is translatable. There was no errors in it. However, there's not an obj file for cpp scratchpad because the compiler choked on the foo. So now I need a way to say, hey, compiler, there is a foo. It exists somewhere else. But there is a foo, and you can use it. So the way we do that is we declare foo, as the reading talks about. We say void foo with a semicolon. We don't put the curlies in here. If I put the curlies in here, I've just redefined foo, which this would work as well. But let's not go there for now, that later video. So I'm going to declare foo. I'm saying, hey, foo exists. It returns void, takes zero arguments. So just go on faith. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm using it according to my declaration up here. I am using it correctly. And so now the compiler will say, okay, I'll trust you because it's the linker's job later to take the two OBJ files and link them into an EXE. So let's go here and uh, let's, let's just uh, CLS. Let me, excuse me, just bear with me for a second. CLS, dir. Uh, notice we have the obj file, so let's uh, delete the obj file. CLS, dir. Okay, so we're just starting clean with two cpp files. And uh, let's do the command to compile these files again together. So cpp scratchpad.cpp and another cpp file.cpp. So make sure to save these. Again, telling the compiler, go off of faith, foo does exist. Hit enter. Pop, pop, pop. Notice that there's no errors. Uh, let's clear the screen and list the, the files now. Now we have two obj files, another cpp file.obj. That's, we changed nothing there, so we would expect that obj file to exist. And then the compiler tra uh, grabbed cpp scratchpad.cpp, translated into an obj file. And then the linker, at the end the linker said, okay, I am going to take these two OBJ files, link them together, meaning when the compiler issued a call to foo here, the linker resolved that call and said, oh, well, foo is over in this other OBJ file. So the linker linked these two OBJ files together into a single executable. And so that's, that's the basics of the, the compiler versus the linker. The compiler can only look at one translation unit at a time. The linker is responsible for linking together the end result.